Good evening, everybody. This is What Does the Bible Say? My name is Caleb Robertson. I am an evangelist with the Church of Christ. I am not in any man-made denomination. My goal in life is to live the Christian life and to help other people do it also. I want to help people become uh, more equipped, more um, informed about the Bible. Talk to a lot of people. I was talking to a lady the other night. She's apostolic. She believes in healing. She's got all, all kinds of health problems. I said, well, why don't they just heal you? She starts making our arguments. I said, don't you know that's our argument? She starts saying, well, Paul didn't heal all his traveling companions. I said, that's my point. Y'all don't have miracles because the reason they had miracles back then, the purpose has been fulfilled. So she said, well, I got some, she said, I do admit I got some questions. Good. Let's talk about those questions. I want to talk to anybody about any of your Bible questions. If I have to say, hey, give me a day or two, I'll get back to you. I don't want to just like say, let's shoot from the hip. I want to give it some thought. If it's something that I've already given some thought to and I know where it is in the book, then let's hit it. So we say this is a live call-in religious broadcast. At some point, we'll have phone lines up on the bottom of the screen. We don't screen our calls. You can call in. When you call in, you're talking directly to me. On this program, we're going to have the Bible program up behind us. As always, this is a King James Version of the Bible. And it's just going to be there so that you can double check me so that you can know that I'm not making stuff up like a lot of denominational preachers do. Now let's start out with Philippians chapter 4 verse number 8. This program, What Does the Bible Say?, has by and large been dedicated to exposing denominational doctrines and de uh, denominational misdoings. Tim Whitehart, sleeping with the flute player. Uh, just uh, now I'm trying to think in list of them. All these different things that we've come up with. We did a big story on all the sex scandal going on in the Southern Baptist Convention. We did a story on all the sex scandal going on within the Catholic denomination. We have exposed individuals who are just fleecing their denomination, just, I'm saying, just robbing them blind off of tithes and offerings, things like that. We try to expose those, but we also want to be individuals as Christians. We want to promote Christian living. Look at uh, Philippians 4, verse number 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And now let's jump over to Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Part of the Christian life is that we're going to be in this world. In 1 Corinthians 5, Paul says, you can't come out of the world. I'm here, right? I, I got to live in it. But I don't have to act like the world. Look at Romans 12, too. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I've got to be different. How different? Uh, noticeably different. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now, when members of the church basically start making the church look so much like a denomination, you're worthless. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, number 13. You're salt, and if you lose your savior, savior, you be, savor, you become like denominations. He says you're worthless. If you're not peculiar, if you're not standing out to individuals, what's the point? Here's our topic tonight. Is it wrong to expose error within the church of Christ? And this is what people call it. They say, Caleb, you about to air out some dirty laundry? I got to tell you, I'd be the biggest hypocrite in town if I wore out denominations the way that we do. And when things arose inside the Lord's church that need to be opposed and I don't oppose it and I just try to sweep it under the rug, you would rightfully call me a hypocrite and you should run me off this TV broadcast. And anything that we do like that, that we say, yeah, we recognize that it's sinful, but what can we do about it? We recognize that it's sinful and we're just going to sweep it under the rug. Don't let me live it down. Stick it to me. That's the only way individuals are going to change. Now, I realize people say, Caleb, okay, you're not perfect. Boy, don't I know it. Nobody is. You're not either. So are we going to use this line, well, nobody's perfect, to promote sin? Or are we actually going to try to do our job and keep sin down? Are we going to try to actually rebuke? Let's look at another passage. Let's look at 2 Timothy. He says in verse number 2, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now this passage does not say, hey, just overlook it. Sweep it under the rug. 
Paul didn't go into this big old long rant about well, really nobody's perfect and we got this and that going on. He says rebuke it. There's just so many passages in the Bible that we could really, really be getting on. Look at this. Um, oh man, Titus 1.13. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. What are we rebuking them for? Just to like tear their hide? No, we are rebuking them so that they might be sound in the faith. People don't understand it. People don't understand what it's like when you actually had to rebuke things and why. They've never done it. I hate this just as much as the next guy, but it's got to be done. So when you say, is it wrong to expose error with inside the church of Christ? No, it's not wrong. It's a good, honest thing to do. And like I said a moment ago, we'd be the biggest hypocrites if we didn't do it. Whose laundry are we airing out? Her name is Barbara England, and she is the, what does it say, the chair of the art department at Freed Hardeman University in Henderson, Tennessee. You say, oh, oh boy, Caleb's fixing to get on his own brethren. I got to. I got to do what Titus 1.13 says to these individuals and these kids, 18, 19, 20, 21. I don't know how old they are. They're going through this program. Y'all, somebody needs to help them because their Bible department sure isn't doing it. Ralph Gilmore isn't doing it. We got to help them. Now, let's stop and take a moment. You're saying, this program's strange. <laughs> You're saying, I'm not in the Church of Christ. What does this have to do with me? This is what I'm trying to emphasize to you. You're in a denomination. I know I talk to so many of y'all and you tell me how sick and tired you are of the inconsistencies of the denominational world. All right, let me prove to you tonight that the Church of Christ is not going to be inconsistent, at least not in Martinsville, Virginia and Danville, Virginia. We are working hard to uphold the truth in whatever realm that we possibly can. Who is Barbara England? She's the head of the art department at Freed Hardeman University in Henderson, Tennessee. And I got to be honest, of all the problems that are going on, I'm saying right now, all of this hot, heavy discussion that's going on. Oh, man. Mm. Let me go. Let me jump back because I got that list I was looking for. We, you say, who is this? Why are you talking about her? I'd be a big old hypocrite if I didn't actually expose what's going on. Y'all remember the preacher named Mayo? I believe he was up towards Roanoke driving a Rolls Royce. Where'd he get it? All of it off the people underneath him. <laughs> Different individuals involved in nursing home scams. Lawrence Campbell living in an $800,000 house in Danville, Virginia and driving a Bentley all off the backs of his churchgoers. Look, Martinsville, Danville, Bassett, used to be jumping. It's not now. And he's just getting it off of all these poor folk. Abundant Life brought in this huge big to-do, some jet setter, and they couldn't even heal a woman in a wheelchair. Now, y'all stick it to me. If you say, Caleb, y'all, y'all ride these denominations, but we look at what your brethren are doing, we can't figure it out. I can't figure it out either. For the life of me, I can't figure out why individuals, it's documented, why individuals like Mark Blackwelder in the Freed Hardeman Bible Department look at the art department and they say, I, I don't really like it, but what can I do about it? You could walk off campus. What is the point in sending, listen, let, you say, Caleb, what are you talking about? This is what the people want. I got some people that are going to be tuning in tonight from Henderson, and they want to see an interview that I did with these six FHU students, and I'm saying you just got to hold on, you got to bear with me. I understand the, the controversy. I think there's a way to approach the situation. Do you know that that card is out of the deck? You guys came down here with your own banner. You don't get to play the let's not have controversy I card. Think, okay, I, I think there's a very mature way. Now, here we're six minutes into this interview, and he's already doing like everybody else. He says, Let, let's just not have all this controversy. Yes, me, Johnny, Micah, and my nephew Tanner, we drove down to Henderson, Tennessee, and we put a 10-foot banner up that said FHUNudeArt.com uh, because we want to get this stuff exposed. Why? Titus 1.13, so that we can get some correction and repentance in here. That's why we did it. Well, these students come along, and they actually had already previously that day had tried to hang their, they had a banner. They tried to hang their banner over our banner, and then they come out here, and now he's pulling that card. Don't, don't. Don't be so controversial. Look, y'all came into it. You came into the discussion. You brought your own banner, which is fine. Wave your banner. But be willing to have a discussion and talk about the points. Now, you might be saying, let's look at them again. 
to this situation. His name's David. He's a young guy. I, I tell you, I don't want to beat up on David. And I don't want to beat up on it. Certainly not on these girls that we're going to talk to. I tell you, we had it. We had the banner on the side of a U-Haul. I got back in the truck, and I sometimes call my dad Johnny. I got back in the truck. I said, man, Johnny. And he said, what? I, I said, I'm, I may have roughed them kids up. I, I said, it's, I'm, I don't want to. I hope I didn't. And I said, but they just weren't answering questions. They, they're putting this stuff out there. And what's the problem? Freed Hardeman is displaying pornography, pornographic material in their art department, and they're mislabeling it as art. Look at this. Here's the evidence, and I can't show it to you on TV. You may say, oh, here comes the evidence. Look at this. This is the website. FHUNudeArt.com. Who is watching the FHU art program? Now you go down here. We got an age disclaimer on it. We got a lawyer working with us, so we got a whole separate disclaimer on that. All this is within the law. And all this is having to be done because of Barbara England's pet project, the art department. Totally unnecessary for a Christian college. Why do they need that? If you're going to have an art department at a Christian college, I would say that's unnecessary. But now that we have it, why do you have nude images in a Christian college art department? Now, this is Barbara England. And if you want to contact somebody, you need to contact her. Phone number 731-989-6089. And I'm sure you'd be able to find an email address for her. And if you want to contact somebody else, you need to contact David Shannon. Here's the email address that he has, dshannon at fhu.edu. I tell you, he already said two years ago there's nothing wrong with the art book, but you need to at least let him know that you have been to fhunudeart.com and you do not support the usage of their material. Don't support it. Don't stand behind it. Now, let's jump backwards. Are you with me? We're fixing to cover some ground, and why are we doing it? Titus 1.13. Rebuke them sharply that they might be sound in the faith. I don't want to beat up on these kids, but I do want to say something. Freed Hardeman should not have let those six young individuals, six young, you know, what? Four young ladies, two young men. They shouldn't have let them come out there. The heads of the school need to be talking to us. The heads of the school are the ones who need to be actually answering these questions, at least trying to answer these questions, and when they get stuck... They need to make some correction. I already said I felt like I may have roughed them up a little bit. Somebody who works with us, they said, you know, Caleb, you're saying that. God knows your heart that you don't want to rough them up. Uh, but he said, you know, it's, it's, it might be good for them that you gave them a wake-up call. Right? You cannot. You're going to see the arguments they're making. We're going to have a big interview about it. But as we get started, look at these points. Is it okay to expose unfaithful Christians. Yes. If you disagree with that, show me otherwise and show me in the Bible. And don't be vague about it either. Don't do this stuff about, well, I just think and I just feel. No, give me some scripture like I'm about to give. Look at, um, look at Ananias and Sapphira. Acts chapter 5, verse number 11. What did uh, Ananias and Sapphira do? Well, they lie about their part of the contribution. He gives such amount, they claim that they gave the entirety of the profit that they just made on selling some land. Ananias dies. Peter brings the fire in. They have a discussion. He said, did y'all agree on this? She said, yeah, we agreed on it. Now she's dead. She's struck dead. The people come in. They wind her up. They carry her out. And look who is touched by it. Great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Now, you know there's got to be a distinction here. People outside of the church are actually hearing. Uh, this, is, this is the church that just started back in uh, uh, Pentecost, right? Y'all got this group going on. Someone says, yeah, that's us. And then somebody says, y'all the ones who got the man and the woman who lied about how much they gave, and then they got struck dead? That's us. Peter does not tell these people, hey, y'all, be quiet about it. Don't let anybody know. Can't y'all take that body out the back door? You know what just happened? They just laid down some authority in their area. Apostolic authority. You're not going to be lying to the apostles, and you're certainly not going to be taking advantage of the church. They were doing Titus 1.13, rebuking sharply that individuals might be sound in the faith. Now, that's just point number one. 
and we could go through a, I, I know it, I know it. Uh, we, could, we could go through a multitude, and all I'm asking is just one on y'all's part. Acts 24, 14, look at this. Now, somebody might be saying, huh, we got him. Look at what Paul says. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. Now, somebody might be saying, we got you, Caleb, because Paul's not talking about brethren here. He's talking about Jews. Who's he talking to? By the time you get to Acts 24, Paul has now entered the arena where he's talking to Roman officials. These Roman officials can't distinguish a Jew from a Christian. So, and even then, what does a Roman official, a Gentile, think about these Jews? Well, they're supposed to be God's people. Look what Paul says about they. They call it heresy. So the Roman official says, so you're uh, saying they're disobedient to God. That's what I'm saying. So you're saying these are God, not God's people? And Paul's going to say, no, they're not. And so the Gentile's going to say, okay, so they were never God's people. No, I'm not saying that. So you're actually saying these people are not God's people and the law that they attested to, that was never really from God. I'm not saying that. Paul doesn't have any of that. Paul lays it out. Yes, the nation of Israel came from God. The law of Moses came from God. These folk just don't keep it. And he said it in front of everybody. And he didn't just say it in front of everybody. He asked permission. He said, can y'all take me to Caesar so that I can actually defend myself against these rebel rousing Jews? You don't have a leg to stand on. People, and I'm saying some of my best friends and I went to preaching school, they say, Cave, you shouldn't air out the church's dirty laundry. I get that nobody's perfect, but y'all shouldn't be having such dirty laundry. Come on now. You got pornography in the art department at a Christian college, and you're mad at me? I don't get that. Now, as we're looking at this and we're saying, who do you really want to talk to? You want to talk to Barbara England. Now, we're going to get into it, and I guess we just need to start moving. But when you talk to Barbara England, you need to really have these talking points about what are people's options. When they look at this information, they look at these art textbooks, and they say, consciously speaking, I can't do it. Religiously speaking, I can't do it. And just the shame that such a conversation is having to happen at a Christian college. You don't believe me? Go to the website. Go to... <laughs> Go to fhunudeart.com and see these images. Now, they're all up in arms. I'm saying students at FHU are up in arms. Uh, Grown-ups who have got their children down at FHU, they're up in arms. Think about what I'm saying. They are displaying pornography in the art department. Somebody from FHU says, no, we're not. You're caught in the middle. How are you going to make a decision? You're going to have to look at it. Now, I will tell you that a whole host of people have started to look at it, and they will say, I didn't make it all the way through. That's how bad it is. They say, I didn't even make it all the way through. If you don't believe me that Barbara England and her art department is displaying these things, look at their textbook. And y'all, we are going to cover some stuff. We're going to turn these stones over. You're going to absolutely see the truth about this matter tonight. Barbara England, now we want to hear from former trustee of FHU, Freed Harmon University, Jay Lockhart. Let's jump over to our audio. Let's get out of this. Let's pull Jay up. I would never a Christian the right direction, plainly as I can. Now, what he's fixing to say, he is going to tell you and me the job of the Christian University president, which is David Shannon. This is his job, and he's going to tell you and me what reflects on the president. Here we go. <laughs> that when students from our schools go out into the communities and they join Baptist churches or community churches, that is a reflection upon the teaching. And ultimately, the teaching is a reflection upon the president. Oh, the president. Oh, see, I'm on the board at Free and have been for 20 years. Now, did you hear that? We have teaching is a reflection upon the president. He's having a conversation with my dad, and he said, the choices, of the, the choices of the students is a reflection on the teaching they received at the school, which is a reflection on the president. Now, I'm going to have slides tonight where FHU, current FHU students are defending 
pornography in the art department, who is that reflection on? It is a reflection on the teachers in the school. It ultimately is a reflection on David Shannon. And that's what we're asking tonight. Why is David Shannon not doing more than he's doing? It's an art department in what y'all call a Christian college. Who cares? Man, <laughs> if I, if, look, somebody said the other day, uh, it was Michael Shank. Michael Shank said, look, the idea that these people are in charge of this entire student body is an illusion. They're coming in. The parents are giving y'all the money. Y'all are not in charge. The parents giving the money are in charge. And so you're going to do what the kids want to do. And evidently, they want nude art. This is a quote, and you're going to hear it. But before you do, we have to hear more from Jay Lockhart. Listen to what he says about Freed Hardeman. You know, us to get together to see if hey, that kind of stuff just rolls around in my mind. It didn't reach what they had. We just didn't. Okay. Is he not there? Yeah, he's there. Okay. But oh, he's not an employee. Yes, he's on the faculty. Oh, but I'm saying if he is off to the left, oh, if we know about it, we'll not renew his contract. Okay. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Freed Hardman is one of the last bastards for, for being on the right track. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Freed Hardman is one of the last bastards for, for being on the right track. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Freed Hardman is one of the last bastards for, for being on the right track. Yeah. Jay Lockhart, former trustee, he says the actions of the students are a reflection on the president. Jay Lockhart, former trustee, said just a couple years ago, he said, and I, I, that word, he says baston, however you want to say it, it's the last stronghold. Freed Hardman, according to Jay Lockhart, is the last stronghold for being, he says, on the right side. Not with pornography in your art department, you're not. And I'm saying not with this, this show, this program tonight, I, you're not going to be on the right side when you got Ralph Gilmore in your Bible department. And I've heard that Ralph Gilmore is going to retire this year, and if he does, that's a chance for FHU to make a turn in the right direction. He says that all this, Jay Lockhart, and I, where, where is Jay Lockhart? I mean, we go a couple years ago, we go from 2015 where everybody is defending Jay Lockhart while we're showing him from 2012 and 2013 OCU lectures with some of the worst liberals and false teachers in the brotherhood, and everybody's defending him. He, that, he has fallen off the earth. Where did Jay Lockhart go? Because he was giving us some insight about the president. The president's job is to get business taken care of. Well, let's actually now hear from the president. Listen to this. This, this original video is six minutes long. And you know why it's six minutes long? David Shannon has been put into an office of a politician. He's not going to come out and just say something. So there's a lot of roundabout talking, but listen to what he does say here. Someone's going to say, Caleb, you edited David Shannon. You can find this original six-minute video if you want to watch it on Carrie Sword's Facebook page. It's from the 2018 lectureship. I cut one spot where he takes a big old breath and he talks about, we have been accused. Here's our answer to the accusation. Here we go. Listen to this. Recently, the university and some faculty, staff, alumni, and students have been publicly challenged and at times attacked regarding the study of nude and semi-nude human forms and sculptures, paintings, pictures within the art program. Following these recent challenges, faculty, staff, and administration have again concluded that these studies of the human form are necessary and appropriate in a large number of academic disciplines, programs, and courses at this university, including the art program. It is crucial for an art graduate from a liberal arts university to be able to draw the human and therefore understand the body. Now, I got to say, at some point, if you got kids in the room, you may not want them to be hearing some of this stuff. But I, let's just go ahead and say now. Did you hear what this man just said? He admitted, and let me say, let's make another plug for the website, fhunudeart.com. 
I know some of y'all are thinking you're you're thinking about these old old style paintings they're like oil paintings and it's you look at it and some dude's got his face over here and everything's mangled up and then some, there's a body part in there and you're saying I, I wouldn't call that pornography and then you're going to be thinking about these statues <laughs> listen whoever made the statue of David that's not David that's just some dude who made a sculpture of a naked man and y'all ooh and ah over it. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, Statue of David's not that bad. Have you, like, thought about that? Like, some, some guy just in a workshop for however long that, that took, and he's just sitting there, boy, the folk are going to love this. What in the world? And then we get a Christian college defending that. It's worse than that. It is so much worse than that. And for him to say that these images, look, I'm saying the PDF, right? You click the PDF, all of this is perfectly legal. We got lawyers working with us. All this is perfectly legal. You click that PDF. You look at the first image, and then you listen to David Shannon say this. Administration have again concluded that these studies of the human form are necessary and appropriate in a large number of academic disciplines, programs, and courses at this university, including the art program. I guarantee you that if you click on the first image, you look at the first image on FHUNewDart.com, you will be saying to yourself, this is not necessary to art. This is, what's the other argument people say? They say medical doctors are going to have to look at a naked body so that they can understand the body. Image number one, no doctor is ever going to have to look at image number one. And no, he says, it is essential graduating from a liberal arts college to be able to depict the body. Okay, you graduate from a Christian college that gives you an art, art degree. You are not going to go open up a studio, private studio, where people come in, they disrobe, and they say, okay, let's have it. You can't do that. <laughs> it's the same argument as why we were against tattoos. Tattoo artist, Johnny had a tattoo artist on the program with him, and Dad asked him, how much time do you spend in, in a man or a woman's crotch doing tattoos and the dude said if they want it there like two to three hours two to three hours with somebody's privates in your face this is this is ridiculous now I'm saying we're going to get to a point you heard David Shannon now I want to show you something else you heard David saying, Shannon say it's necessary here's the quote nude images are necessary to the art program no they're not especially not in a Christian college. What would you send your kids to Freed Hardman for in the first place? Let's look at some scriptures now. Look at this. And here's my point also. Romans 13, 14. You would not believe. Let me show you another website. If you go here, this is FHU Uncovered. This is Carrie Sword's website. And the reason I'm showing it to you is because all the documentation is in here. All the conversations that he had with staff members, faculty members, what have you, it's there. You would not believe the amount of people that they actually are having to talk to at that school. And I'm saying it's realistic. It's a lot of people. It's everywhere. People are already struggling with pornography. And then they come into class. You get your gardener's art through the ages textbook. You open it up. Boom. Topless women. And again, it's not these oil paintings. It's not this you know, hodgepodge, there is a picture of a woman, multiple shots, just boom, 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 breasts everywhere. Now here's my thing. They, they get on this discussion, they say, well, if that arouses you, you're just a weirdo. That's not the point, is it? Someone comes in and they say, this woman's kind of gross, and, but he, I'm looking at breasts. Does it not create curiosity for the individual? And don't tell me no, because if you're being honest with me, you and I both know that people are having a hard time in the school. People are having to be ministered to about pornography. And then they come to the art class and they're hit with it. Now here's another point when I say contact Barbara England. Now, different, I'm saying multiple statements were made to Christina Sword, who was the art student who, had, who ended up leaving the school, and her father, Carrie Sword. It was said to her, be ready to study this material or drop the class. 
she start, Christina starts asking for, can I not have like some alternate material? Can I not work on some other projects? And teachers began to tell her, Christina, there's going to be, what, if you do this class or you do this class, there's going to be nudity in all of these. And actually, Christina had a classmate who was ahead of her who was having the same problems Christina was having with the book. She said, I don't have good conscience looking at these images. But that student was just, she just went ahead and she did it. She said, I want to get the grade, and she just went ahead and she did it. Well, not everybody's worried so much. I'm not, put, I'm not trying to really knock that girl. It is Barbara England's fault, and it's David Shannon's fault. You parents out there, you entrusted the school with your young 18, 19-year-olds, and this is what they're doing with them. But that girl just wanted to make the grade, and she went ahead. Well, Christina's not going to do that. So we start having this discussion. Now, FHUNudeArt.com. Here it is. Look at this. You might be saying, Caleb, why can't we have a preview on the show? Look at this. It is of such a nature that according, we're on a television broadcast, we just happen to be simulcasting to YouTube. As per the FCC, we can't even show it to you on television. Now look at this. We get these people that are talking to us, y'all, these pictures are ridiculous. The person who helped us build the website is not even a member of the Church of Christ, and when he saw it, he said, he's, he called Johnny, he said, Johnny, this, this is just smut. This is just smut, and it's coming out of a Christian college? He can't believe it. I can't believe it. Okay, thank you for that. Now, look at this, y'all. People are saying, it's not pornography. It's art. It's the celebrating of, of a body. Look at this. Federal law prohibits obscene, indecent, profane content from being broadcast on the radio or TV. That may seem clear enough, but determining what obscene, indecent, profane mean uh, profane mean can be difficult depending on what, who you talk to. But look at this. In the Supreme Court's 1964 landmark case on obscenity and pornography, Justice Potter Stewart famously wrote, I know it when I see it. You look at these images and you will know it when you see it. And you say, Caleb, how do you know? Because everybody else who has finally looked at these images, they say, that's it. That's enough. Now, let's talk about this. Here's the problem. Two years ago, we tried to hit this head on, but we didn't show the images. People were saying, you can't show the images. You can't send them out. You can't, you can't do it. And so you know what happened? Nobody believed us. We were telling people there's pornography in the FHU art department, and everybody would say, no, 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 there's no way they're not doing that. They'd say, I know David Shannon. David Shannon wouldn't allow that to go on. They'd say, you're wrong. You've been misinformed. Here we go. Drew Milligan, I believe he's in McMinnville, Tennessee, he says, I checked it out, and it was an eye-opener. Honestly, they do not need an art department at all, or at the very least, why not get a different textbook? They're trying to pull that. They're trying to say different students are talking to me, and they're trying to say they don't use uh, Gardner's art through the ages. Well, let's see, what we, uh, let's see what you're using now. And can we ask this question? 2018, why are y'all not using Gardner's art through the ages anymore? Because 2018, David Shannon got up in the, in the lectureship and he said, there's nothing wrong with this book. You just incriminated yourself. If y'all actually got rid of Gardner's art through the ages and you switched to another book right after Christine and Carrie Sword actually exposed this material and you try to say there's nothing wrong with it and then you just so happened to change the book, you incriminated yourself. Why would you do that? You just said it was essential and necessary to the art department. Now you just got rid of it. Now... Somebody can help me out. What are y'all using? The annotated Mona Lisa? Is that what the, the textbook has been switched to? Because if so, it's just as bad. Drew Milligan. He says, when I checked it out, it was an eye-opener. That's what everybody's saying. Nobody believed it until they actually saw the information. This is what does the Bible say. <laughs> I'm waiting to have questions answered. Okay. Okay, you're on live. This is live TV. Actually saw the information. This is what okay. does the Bible say? You're going to have to turn, whatever you're watching on, you're going to have to turn that down. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's just creating an echo for us. Okay, so I have several questions to start off. Okay. I think my big question might be what you have to say about what it says in 1 Corinthians. 6 
specifically verses 1 through 4 and even maybe 5. Okay, so are you talking, I know what that text says about why does one brother go to law with another brother? Yeah, and I'm just curious because amidst all the Facebook arguments and stuff like that, you know, it's kind of hard to get a grip on what has been actually said personally to faculty and staff and administrators, what have you, and what is being plucked, what's being... So, have you been listening the whole time? I, excuse me? Have you been watching the show the whole time we've been going? Did, I'm saying, did you just I not... I have been watching this show the whole time. Okay, did you not hear David Shannon say that these images are essential to the art program? They are necessary to the art program? You heard him say that. And have you also heard any of the art students who have said that the specific book you're talking about has not been used? Okay, so... Has they been in the art department? Ma'am, ma'am, if it... I heard that. Students have been saying that. If it has not... When, when did you say it hasn't been used? How long? How long has it not been, been used? Listen, I don't know. Okay, you're on what does the Bible say? Uh, I just have, like, a question for you to answer, and you can answer whatever way you want. Okay. Okay. So, I understand that you believe the nudity in art is completely wrong. Is that right to say? Yeah. Well, then, what would you say is the problem with studying it medically and having a medical understanding of the anatomy of the body? Okay. In what realm, I'm saying, in what realm are these art students? I understand your question, but I'm having to build that there is going to be a difference, yes? Can a person at Freed Hardeman get an art degree and actually make a living painting new, live nudes every day? That does not actually happen. Okay, so why do they need images of topless women in their book? Why do they need it in a medical textbook? Okay, so I actually have a family friend who's going out to get a mastectomy very soon. You are actually not even recognizing the comparison here. You're trying to justify the art department by saying, well, the medical doctors have to do it. Why no, do people, wait a second, why do people in the art department need the topless images? Because I'm saying the people that I talk to they don't have a medical degree. I'm saying the students that I talked to the other day, one of them is majoring in theater and production. Okay. Okay, I got another call. You know what does the Bible say? Okay, you're on live. Okay, you're gonna have to turn y'all stuff down. If you're watching me on a laptop or you're watching me on a smartphone, you're making a delay. Now, let's keep going with these quotations. Drew Milligan says, I checked it out. It was an eye-opener. They don't even need the art department. Did you hear that caller say, why do medical students need to look at it? Look at the images on FHUNudeArt.com, and you ask me, does that apply to the medical field? And he wouldn't answer my question. He says, well, why do doctors need to look at a, a naked physical body? That has nothing to do with what the art students are doing in the art department that are majoring in theater production. That has nothing to do with you. That's not helping your case. Let's look at some more. Chris Moore, he says, I suspect that Dale, talking about Dale Pollard, that's Neil Pollard's son, Dale Pollard is actually defending the uh, pornography that's going on at FHU. He says, I doubt that Dale has, uh, has not looked, or he says, I suspect that Dale has not looked at the site. I thought that this might be much ado about nothing. Was I wrong? Pure filth in some of the images shown. Dale's a good guy, and I suspect he hasn't looked at what they are teaching as art. To be called a Brotherhood University and allowing people to use this garbage as their teaching material is awful. I agree, Chris Moore. Terry, Terry, you got a hard last name, brother. I don't know how to say that, but I know this man is from Wyoming. I didn't even see the whole thing. I can't believe that a Church of Christ school would promote this. Frank Beek, Frank is from Michigan. I don't understand why or how anyone professing to be a Christian can in any way accept this vulgarity, so-called Bible Belt. Now again, you're looking at these quotes. I've never met Frank Beek, I've never met Terry, and I've never met Chris Moore. I don't even know that me and Chris Moore are friends on Facebook. But they have looked at the evidence and they have made up their mind and they're just, why? Why, why are y'all fighting tooth and nail for Barbara England's art department when y'all pride yourself in being the last faithful school in the brotherhood. You know, I've called your Bible department and I asked, I think his name was Justin, I have it on record, I recorded it. I talked with Justin, I said, Justin, 
if I came to take Bible at Fried Hardeman, what would the class be like? And he said, well, everybody has to take certain classes like Life of Christ or New Testament, stuff like that. I said, no, no, no. I mean like in depth, big time, going into Bible study, what would the, the teacher ratio be? He said about one to five. Y'all are only cranking out one to five. Teacher to ratio. It's not the last sound school in the brotherhood. It's not a sound school in the brotherhood. We got nudity in the art department and my phone lines are lighting up with people who are defending pornography in the art department. They're making bad arguments for Barbara England's art department. And where's David Shannon and all this? Because we got the students calling in on the phone line. This is what does the Bible say? Hello, hello. Hello, how you doing? Hello, I was, I was just saying if I could call in. Yeah, you're live. I'm live right now? Hello. I got this one. I got line two. You know what does the Bible say? Hey, hey, I am the guy, I'm Sam Boyd, the guy that posted the selfie with the David statue. Yeah, tell everybody what was in the David statue. Your face was right next to what on the David statue? It was next to one of the greatest uh, works of Western art. So you don't want to tell everybody that you put your face right next to it the scrotum? scrotum. Wait a go. second. This is Sam Boyd. He's a current FHU student. He wants everybody to know that he sent me a selfie with his face right next to the scrotum of the statue of David. That's what you want everybody to hear, Sam? Hello? Hello. You're there. I just put you on hold. Yeah. It's one of the greatest works of art in the Western world. What, what's great and about it? You like the privates on there or what? Uh, no. I appreciate that it was made by Michelangelo, who is one of the greatest contributors to That's all you're art, getting, friends. art and architecture and sculpture. You hear how he's defending the pornography also, and the FHU art department? And look at the website, because it's not just the Statue of David. He thinks we're making like I this big to-do about the I Statue of the David. Website. He doesn't have anything to say. He's just calling up, I appreciate Michelangelo for making this big old statue out of whatever material they made out of. Tell me why they need topless photos in the art book. And you might be saying, Man, is somebody out there saying, well, topless photos? Well, these are awful. Look at the evidence. This is the textbook. Somebody just said, they don't even use that textbook. It's still in the bookstore. There it is. I'm on fhubookstore.com, Gardner's Art Through the Ages. There it is, right there. And then, like I said, what are y'all using? Annotated Mona Lisa, because if that's your go-to, if, if you are, you just tell me. If you're using the annotated Mona Lisa, that's not any better. You think you're basically digging yourself out of a hole. You're just like digging sideways into the hole. Look at these quotes. People, what people are saying once they have seen the evidence. Aaron Hines, wow, shame on FHU. Dan Henry, I signed a peti petition against it, I believe, last year, so I know it's happening they are trying to get my son to attend college there, but that's not going to happen. Y'all are losing potential students already. Pam Pamela Hughes, nude pictures or statues or whatever should not be in Christian environment. Nudity for learning medical training is entirely different. We all recognize that. These calls who brought up the, the medical doctor has nothing to do with these awful images, y'all. There's one in here, it is so weird. Nudity with like a dead chicken and a hot dog, and they call it Meat Joy. And that's what's going on at FHU Art Department. Barbara England, FHU Art Department, what's David Shannon doing? And man, we got these phones going. But they're not saying anything. Sam Boyd called in, he just went on a tear about Michelangelo. Give me why they are having such a hard time with topless women over there. And stop saying that it's not an issue when it's not just Christina Sword, it's the classmate above Christina Sword who even she said, I've got problems with this. Let's go back to our comments. Nude pictures, statues, or whatever should not be in a Christian environment. Look at John Mitchell. Now he kind of slipped up here, but we're gonna use it to our advantage. He says, you know, if I knew that a, a Christian was unrepentantly looking at, say, Playboy, and I was trying to get Brethren to encourage him to repent, the last thing I would do in my efforts to make people aware of the situation is send a link to them and tell them they can click on the link and view the Playboy issues for themselves. Seems to me that's kind of counterproductive. John Mitchell, this is what I say to him. Thank you for comparing the uh, FHU art department to Playboy. That's what it is. You open up your Playboy, got a topless woman in there. You open up Gardner's Art Through the Ages and the FHU Art Department, got a topless woman in there, got several topless women in there. What's the difference? 
Somebody says, well, you're celebrating the, uh, you're celebrating the, the, the feminine figure. <laughs> That's what perverts say that are looking at Playboy. They say the same thing. You're using the same argumentation. Look at this. Brandon Blankenship, he's a graduate of Bear Valley. Look what he does. He slips up a little bit too. He says, Caleb Robertson, I don't attend Freed, and I know very little about it, and thus I'm not going to judge the situation from secondary sources. Well, secondary source, we got the textbook on the Internet. Look at this. I certainly disagree with pornographic images, but regardless, that doesn't prove that all men and women speaking at the, uh, the Freed lectureships are guilty by association. Look at what he just did. He just admitted there are pornographic images at FHU. He says, I disagree with pornographic images. But despite, but regardless of those pornographic images, that doesn't mean that the lectureship speakers are guilty. He just said it. He said there's pornographic images there. Don't give me this business about secondary sources. The textbook is on the internet. David Madden, if those pictures were in a high school textbook, would it be art? Nope. Somebody would be getting in trouble for showing those image, images to individuals who are underage. Look at what he says. I thought it was being blown out of proportion. Didn't everybody? I thought it was being blown out of proportion, mounting out of a molehill. Well, it is not. You need, to, you need only to look into the first few pictures to see this is not art. This is pornography. Sad that they have gone this way. You might say, boy, ain't you running, running out? Nope. Lori White, look what she says. Caleb Robertson, I looked at the PDF, part of it anyway. I couldn't continue looking at it. I am appalled that an institution that would represent themselves as an institute of godly education would have such content in their curriculum. I am too. Jerome Michael, he says, in the art field successfully for 19 plus years, fine oil paintings, graphic design, illustrations, print, etc. Never had I once needed the skill of seeing slash drawing nude figures that I could not have learned from drawing a still life. The images from the text FHU art book are filth and should be removed. Matthew Travis, some of those images were sickening. Why are they so stubborn to continue showing these lascivious images? Freed Hardman is not immune to error, and it is not the authority on what is moral. The Bible is. What would the great preachers of the past think of this? They would think it's awful. They would think that some corrections need to be made. They would think that David Shannon needs to do a better job of actually getting this stuff out of here. Now, let's jump ahead. Let's get to our interview because we need to show you what really is happening at FHU. Look at this. Sword, either be ready to gardeners. All right, are you guys FHU students? Uh, yeah, we actually are. Okay, so have you seen the website? Uh, we have. Okay. Have you seen the PDF? Uh, Gardeners. How hard is it? He had to think about it. Have you seen the PDF? Uh -huh. You saw the website? There's only one thing on the website. I'm saying we're going to get to a point in a second in this video where it's going to be obvious people are making uninformed decisions. Art through the ages? Yeah. Okay, what do you think about it? Is it pornographic or do you think it's suitable for class? I don't understand. What is your... What is, what do you hope to gain so by it, being this device? Gardeners, art through the ages? Yeah. Okay, what do you think about it? Is it pornographic or do you think it's suitable for class? I don't understand why. What, is your, what, is, what do you hope to gain so by it, being this device? Now you see that? This FHU student, I can't remember his name, you'll see it in a minute, he comes out and I ask him, have you seen the PDF? I think so. Are the images pornographic or are they art? and he immediately deflects. He immediately shifts away and he starts saying, I just don't understand what you hope to gain out of this. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want you to see it. They don't want you to show it to their donors. They don't want you to show it to the parents. They don't want you to show it to the elders. They don't want you to show it to the preachers because it is awful stuff. You just saw the quotes, all those different people saying, this is awful, it needs to be removed. And I asked this student, he comes out, they wave a banner that says, uh, I don't know, Art joins us or something like that. Art joins us. And I ask him, are the, are the images pornographic or are they art? Immediately starts deflecting. Look at this. Is it uh, suitable for class or is it porno pornographic? 
Okay. Okay, so the lady, did you see the lady who was topless with uh, tiny little plastic vaginas pasted all over her? You saw that one? It's the first image. Uh, that, is, that, that is not covered in our class. So, I have been in the class where that textbook is present, and that is not covered. So why did the art teacher tell Christina Sword either be ready to study all this information, all these images, or drop the, the class? The teacher did not tell her that. Okay, so you were in the meeting? What? Were you in the meeting with Christina and the art teacher? I have talked to the art teacher. Okay. So all the one-on-one -on -one back and forth that is documented, you're saying is absolutely falsified? Yes. Okay, so we have your opinion. Your name? Okay. Well, I've already got your face. Okay. Now, you heard what he said when we asked him a second time. This is what Jacob Johnson said. Pictures of topless women in art class are artistic. It's not pornographic. And you heard him, he stipulated, he said, I think it's suitable for an art class. Okay, so where do you draw the line? Teacher puts up, you know, we're gonna look at this, and, and lip, really, y'all, they're not gonna tell you everything, are they? Are they gonna tell you about the, pho the photography project, about the boyfriend and what he tried of his girlfriend in the photography project? Some dude comes in, shows all the boys in class, topless photo, teacher says, what y'all got? And they said, art. We're in art class, it's suitable for art class. Pictures of topless women are artistic. That's what Jacob Johnson says. Now let's jump ahead. Do y'all have a comment? Well, let's get this young lady. With, uh, peaceably, I have no problem with you all. I really don't. Yeah, we don't have a problem I, with you guys either. I love you all. It's principles. I mean, we're talking and about principles I, here. I respect that you're convicted by this, but I want you to know that it really doesn't do uh, it's got the four of us talking, so it evidently has done something. It's, it's done something, but I don't think you care. I don't think you care about my well-being. Now there it is. Listen to this. Oh, that's why we're doing this. We don't want people that are just like Christina Sword to have to do this. This young man, boil it all down. He says, I don't think that you're concerned about my well-being. Is anybody concerned about the well-being of Christina Sword? You explain to me why a Christian college will let a man and his multiple children come back from the mission field of Ukraine, and when they get to Freed Hardeman College, which is supposed to be the soundest school in the Brotherhood, her, her, his daughter can't even make it through the art program. And you're going to talk about well-being? These people just spent 20 years in the mission field. And she did not even get to finish her schooling. Why? Because the teacher said, look, Christina, there's going to be nudity in everything. Don't get me started on who's concerned about well-being here. <laughs> Come on. These people are working a job just like anybody else. All the faculty, everybody in the school is working a job. And listen, back in the 1940s and the 1950s, they ejected a president. The students formed a sit-in until that dude resigned. They're worried about it. They don't want to lose their job. There are a bunch of people in the school that they're not going to say anything because they don't want to lose their job. And what they are actually doing is they're forcing young individuals who actually do have a pure conscience that they think, oh, I like art. I'll go through the Freed Harmon Art Program. And then they get there and they say, I can't do this. And then some old folk are over there saying, hey, man, don't mess up my retirement. This is a bad mess. This is a bad mess. This man is not helping it. Listen to here. Hi, I'd like to talk to this man now. Sir, so did you see the website? I'm sorry? Have you seen the FHU Nude Art website? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, have you seen the textbook Gardener's Art Through the Ages? Uh, no. Are you a freed student? I don't wish to comment on that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to assume that I guess you are, otherwise you wouldn't be out here with the uh, with this banner. Uh, no, I just heard that uh, we're going to put up a banner. So, guys, is he a free student? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Listen so, to this. Uh, so, have you? I don't know your name. You've, your name's Caleb name. Robertson. Nice to meet you. Your name? Where do you, what is your name? His, that's Tanner. And your name? Uh, David. David, okay. Nice to meet you. So, nice you have not seen the images? I don't think so. So how could you possibly be out here making an informed decision? You're just basically operating with these guys when you actually might disagree with them. No, I'm pretty positive. Uh, I think we're on the same But way. you haven't seen the evidence, so you are in fact making an uninformed decision. Uh, I'm pretty informed with my decisions. So. You have not seen the images? I don't think I need to. So you have not made an informed decision. You. 
That is a Freed Hardeman student for you. He comes out with his friends and he hasn't even seen the images under question. We're all out here trying to say, is it pornography or is it art? Well, he's coming out and he's saying, it's definitely not pornography, it's art. Well, have you seen them, David? No, I haven't. Don't be like David. Look at the information and then get on the phone and call Barbara England and ask her, why are y'all doing this? There should not be a shred of evidence touching this campus. Then call David Shannon, call Milton Sewell, call Billy Smith, call Mark Blackwelder, call Doug Burleson. These individuals need to hear from you. I got to start moving. Now, this is a young lady, Madeline Grace Turner. She talked to me and she said, Caleb, that textbook has not been used in years. I never got a distinct number. I don't know what years means. If that textbook has not been in, used in so long, why was David Shannon defending it two years ago? I asked her, if y'all haven't been using that book in forever, how'd Christina Sword get her hands on it? She couldn't answer me. And you know why? She can't explain that. If y'all aren't using this textbook, how is it getting into the hands of students to where they say, consciously speaking, I can't do this? She says, we haven't been using it for years. Why did David Shannon defend it then if you're not using it anymore? And why did you change? Everybody's saying, we don't use Gardner's Art Through the Ages anymore. Why'd you change if there was nothing wrong with the book? <sighs> this is what FHU students are doing. Jacob Sewell, they're all laughing. These are the students of Freed Hardeman. This is what you're putting your young person. You're sending your little girl up to Freed Hardeman. She's a big girl now, and she's fixing to get thrown in with all this type of stuff. Jacob Sewell, this is his Twitter account. Hi, he's making a joke. Look what he's doing. He's posting this stuff on his, on his Twitter like it's a joke. My name is Adam. Please click the link in my bio to subscribe to my private snap, Artistic Images, 18 years and up only. And you click on it, and it's there. He's got, he's got this painting of genitals on his Twitter page, and he's making a joke. Go to the FHU, FHUNewToArt.com and see how bad it is. You'll be looking at that painting of David and say, boy, this is, this is worse than that. This is, or that's Adam. You'll be saying it's worse than the statue of David. I'm not even going to get that one. Look at what this kid says. Zach Golson. He's a young man. He's putting himself out there. He's making an argument. If we're not exposed to the world around us, how do we expect to understand and tell the gospel to the people that live in it? Okay, so you've got to look at nude images before you can help somebody get away from nude images. Do you have to go to the bar before you can help people get, uh, you know, stop being a drunkard? Do you have to go into the strip club to tell somebody, hey man, you ain't got no business in there. Does your wife have to get an abortion before you can start ministering outside Planned Parenthood? Do you have to get on crack cocaine before you can tell somebody, say crack is whack? No, you know better than that. But look at this, Freed Hardeman is letting these young individuals form these type of thought processes and it is bad logic. It will not stand. You do not have to look at nude images to understand what's out there in the world. The Bible is going to work. Jesus said, don't lust after a woman. And he says, well, I got to do a little bit of it or I'm not going to be able to help people. Now, I got to, I got to hit this on my closing points, y'all. Who's taking a stand? Who's taking a stand against the pornography in the FHU art department. Look at this, an open letter to the FHU board regarding nudity and art, February 2018, Brad Harib. Brad Harib, I believe, is a neurobiologist. He writes a great piece on what these images do to your brain. Appreciate Brad for stepping up to that. Branson Church of Christ, this is Tim Kidwell. He wrote a note and they just reshared it. Nudity and art, and that's the Freed Hardeman logo. He's exposing Freed Hardeman. Tennessee Bible College, Kerry Duke, he's the vice president. He wrote an article, Nude Art and Christian Colleges. He wrote a whole article against it. Mark McHorder. The only way I know Mark is I buy all manner of books from Mark, but somehow he's, I think, a retired something. He's in the medical field. He wrote an article saying that all these statements, like the caller said earlier, what about people going to practice medicine? Mark McHorder says that's nonsense. Can't even make that argument. Now, we're saying who's taking a stand against the pornography? Don Blackwell said to Carrie Sword, I believe, Carrie, that your stance is proper and biblical. I'm very disappointed with Freed for the erroneous and sinful position. Sinful. You can't keep fellowshipping that if they don't repent. Don Blackwell and GBN pulled away from Freed Hardman. Why isn't everybody else? Who's taking a stand? Now, who's lending a hand? B.J. Clark of the Memphis School of Preaching on the 4th of February just was a lecture speaker down at Freed Hardman. 
We got all these, all these men writing articles, and what's, what's B.J. Clark going to do? I love B.J. Clark. Me and B.J. Clark pulled a funny joke on the whole MSOP class when I was a first-year student. Love him. But this is bad. He is lending a hand to a school that refuses to repent. Keep going. Let's zoom out of that. Denny Petrello. Now, I got to say, at this point, I wouldn't send anybody to MSOP, and I wouldn't send anybody to Bear Valley. Director of Bear Valley, Denny Petrello, he's over here speaking at the uh, Fried Hardman Lectures, and my dad was talking to Luis Camacho about Denny Petrello. What's he going to do? Luis said, well, Denny's a big boy. He can handle himself. Did he speak out against it? Because that's the problem that's going on right now. Dan Winkler, Kirk Brothers, president of Heritage Christian University. I wouldn't send anybody to Heritage either. And I wouldn't send anybody to listen to Dan Winkler. And why don't y'all ask Wesley Simons what he said about Dan Winkler? Wesley Simons says, I lost respect for Dan Winkler years ago. Ask him and see if he denies it. You say, Caleb, I'm not in the church. What does this mean to me? I, I would hope that you could take away from this information tonight and say, hey, I get a fair shake in the Martinsville Church of Christ. I get a fair shake at the Danville Church of Christ. They do things, nothing by partiality. I might lose support over this. I've certainly lost friends already. I, I got to do it. Got to do it. Acts 10, 34, God's not a respecter of persons. I'm not respecting these universities and their, and their titles and whatnot. What sin is sin, I got to go. My time is out. I got producers telling me to get off the air. <laughs> friends, my phone number is 276-806-3641. We love you. We love you. I love the students over there at the school. But we got to Titus 1, 13. Rebuke them sharply so they can be sound of faith. I got to go. Y'all have a good night and God bless you.